everybody to another episode of Brian Hell's Brews, the show where I drink and evaluate the wonderful nectar of the gods that is beer. This week on the program, I will admit I've had this beer plenty of times before, but every time I've had it in canned form, it's come out flat. I don't think that would be the case this time. Today I have the Java Man Cometh from the Dayton Beer Company in Dayton, Ohio. It is an American style stout with coffee added. Weighing in at 7.0% alcohol by volume. Like I said, I've had this beer before, and apart from it being flat, I think it's decent. I think it's going to get a good score. Before I put this under the microscope, though, we've got a scoring system we use on this show. Let's go over that really quick. Scoring for Brian Hill's Brews is based loosely on the scoring system used by the Beer Judge Certification Program. In our system, a beer can earn a maximum of 10 points. One point can be awarded for appearance, two points for aroma, four points for flavor, one point for mouthfeel, and two points can be awarded for a beer's overall impression. And finally, partial points can be awarded in any category. So that's how scoring works, so now let's find out if the Java Man Cometh will bring more with it than just Java. Okay, again, since it's a can. Ooh. Nice push. Oh, 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 a little bit of an explosion there, but nothing spilling so far. Let's get started. First off, one point for the appearance of the beer, its color, its head, and everything that's pleasing to the eye. So let's get started. Oh boy, let's see the carbonation. Oh, but, 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 I'm wondering if this is even too much. Well, that's what I'll deal with for the moment. I'll top it off later. Holding it against the light. Can I see through it? No, I can't. That's great. It's got a nice color to it. It's retaining itself very well. No faults at all with the appearance. So I'll keep things quick and just give the full one point for the appearance to the Java Man Cometh. Good score to start with. Up next is two points for the beer's aroma, how it smells, and everything pleasing to the nose. Let's top this off a little bit, get a little bit more carbonation coming out of this. All right, two points on the line. Here we go. Hmm. It smells kind of mild. I'm not getting really, really hefty malty notes of this from this at all. And obviously no hoppy notes, which of course you expect from a stout. If someone told me that coffee was in this, I'd be surprised. Something about it smells weird. I don't know what it is. It doesn't smell bad, it smells good, but I'm just having trouble identifying what I'm smelling. Let me get one last smell, and just, as long as there's some carbonation left. Ah, that smell was more on the money. When all the carbonation, when all the carbonation cell and I smelled the beer itself, that's when I got that familiar stout smell. Before I had that one last smell, I was thinking maybe 1.3, 1.4, but now that's the smell you get from a stout. That's the smell you want. That's it. And I even smell a tiny bit of coffee notes as well, which is definitely good. Again, because at the beginning it didn't smell so great, I got to take a little bit off for that, but at the end it started smelling what it was supposed to smell like. So it won't get a two. But I feel very comfortable giving this beer for aroma a 1.8. And now it's time to find out what the Java Man Cometh is really made of. Four points are on the line for flavor. Again, I remember just when casually drinking it, it tasting pretty, pretty good, but we'll see what happens when I analyze it as much as I can, as much as an idiot from Dayton, Ohio can. Anyway, four points on the line for the Java Man Cometh. Bottoms up. I think my palate is still screwed up from some other things I had before I started filming here. I have trouble identifying the malt and the uh, coffee flavor in the beer here. I blame that. I'm getting the hint of the coffee flavor. And I'm getting some of the roastiness of the malt in the aftertaste. I want to say you should be getting that when you actually drink the beer itself before you finish it off. In the aftertaste is fine though. For one of the few times in my life in the show, I am stumped. I am genuinely stumped. This isn't a kind of beer that really jumps out at me and says, wow, this is awesome. But it's not a plain ordinary beer either. 
I'm definitely getting the coffee notes from this beer. If you told me there was coffee in this beer, I might not call you a liar, but I'd say you might be stretching the truth a little bit. Maybe when I think when I like when I, when I think of stouts, I just think of something that's got more maltiness and more heft to it versus something like this. It's still pretty good though, but maybe it's just my personal preference. I don't recall a glass ever being this empty when I'm evaluating a taste. I have a score in mind, and I'm going to go with it. It doesn't deserve a full four. It doesn't even deserve a 3.5. Damn you, Java man. Why do you punish me like this? Why do you make me think so hard? Damn you, Java man. So if a possible four points for flavor, I'm giving the Java man cometh 3.2. Better than average, but I think it could be a little more pronounced, if you will. Nearing the home stretch, one point on the line for mouthfeel. That is the beer's body, carbonation, and everything that's pleasant to the tongue and the mouth in general. So, let's not waste any more time. Here we go. I think the body on this one's a little bit off. For a seven for a seven point zero percent alcohol beer, I expect to be there be a little more body. I'm, maybe I'm just not getting it, or maybe I'm just Crazy and insane, I don't know. At the same time, with a stout, you want, don't want a whole lot of carbonation here. Which is why I was in the back of my mind a little bit concerned when I felt this can was about to explode with carbonation. And as you saw, if the camera angle was right, it exploded with foam just a little bit. I didn't even shake it. But there's a lot of carbonation there, which I think is a minus for a stout. That one was a little bit better, but not by too much. I think, yeah, the body for this, I think it's it's okay, but not great. Again, doesn't blow me out of the water. And the carbonation, at least with this can, was way too much. Whereas other times I've bought this product, the carbonation was almost non-existent. For mouthfeel, I'm going to give the Java Man Cometh a 0.6 for the mouthfeel. And lastly, for the overall impression. Baden Beer Company's coming along. Again, the first times I've had this beer, it was flat. This time, it's overcarbonated. This is a good quality beer. I don't know if it's just the carbonation that's brewing in it. I don't think so. And maybe I'm just biased a little bit. I don't know. I really don't know what how else to say it. I want this beer to be awesome. I want to really fall in love with this beer. I think maybe if they just dialed down the carbonation just a little bit, this would be maybe not worthy of a nine overall after adding everything together but i mean as as, I, as you've seen before on this show carbonation can go a long way to making or breaking a beer a lot of the beers i've had were under carbonated this is one of the rare instances where over carbonating it kind of takes away from everything at the same time i don't know if it's the carbonation that's taken away from it but i'm having a little bit of difficulty finding the malt and the coffee notes of this maybe they're just too subtle for my stupid tongue but, I mean, overall, it's a nice, it's a good beer. It's a nice, very good quality beer. Mm -hmm. So, overall, it's definitely not worthy of a two. But it's not bad enough that it's a one. So, for the overall impression, out of a possible two points, I feel comfortable giving this beer 1.6. I have done the math. And out of a possible ten points available here on Brino's Brews, the Java Man Cometh earns... 8.2 points. Looking at my numbers here, <clears throat> the mouthfeel took about maybe 0.4 points off and it residually took some points off of the overall impression. I don't know if it was enough to bump it up to a 9 to make it one of my top tier champion products here, but the overcarbonation just took away from it just a little bit. I'd like to see them put a little bit more flavor into it, put the more maltiness into this, or maybe pronounce the coffee flavor just by a smidget. I think just doing that a little bit might improve this up to a nine. But still, it's not bad. I mean, if you're here in town in Dayton, Ohio, for whatever reason, maybe, give this beer a shot. And if you're in Dayton, give this beer a shot. Well... That will do it for another episode of Brino's Brews here on Brino's World. Thank you very, very much for watching. If you've had this beer before and think I screwed up, or if you've got suggestions for beers I should try on this show, 
please leave a comment down below. Otherwise, don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to Brino's World if you haven't already. Once again, thank you very, very much for watching and have yourself a good one.